Today, at least four members of the United States Supreme Court agreed to hear Donald Trump's appeal, arguing that presidential immunity protects him from criminal prosecution for the charges filed by Jack Smith against Donald Trump for crimes leading up to and on January 6th. It takes only four members of the court to agree to hear a case, and of course, it takes a majority of five members of the court to issue an opinion in the case. The Supreme Court threw out half of Donald Trump's appeal today and granted a hearing on the other half of the appeal. The part of the appeal that the Supreme Court threw out today was Donald Trump's claim of double jeopardy on the basis that he is now being prosecuted for some of the same crimes he was charged with in his second impeachment trial in the United States Senate, in which a majority of senators voted to find him guilty, but not the two-thirds necessary to convict him. The Supreme Court gave Trump's lawyers three weeks to submit their brief and gave Jack Smith then three weeks to reply to the Trump brief. Then the Trump lawyers will get a final week for a final written reply. And a week after that, the Supreme Court will hear the arguments in the case on April 22nd. The Supreme Court is not being asked to provide total and absolute immunity for any and all possible criminal conduct by a president. The Trump petition to the Supreme Court only asks for immunity for a president's official acts or, quote, those performed within the outer perimeter of his official responsibility. The argument Trump's lawyers make before the Supreme Court could be a rerun of some of what we heard in the appeals court. Could a president order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? That's an official act in order to SEAL Team 6? He he would have to be and would speedily be you know, uh, uh, impeached and convicted before the criminal what prosecution. If you weren't, what if you weren't? There would be no criminal prosecution, no p- criminal liability for that? Chief Justice's opinion in murder against Madison and uh, uh, and our Constitutional tradition and the plain language of the impeachment judgment clause all clearly presuppose that what the founders were concerned about was not... I asked a- you a yes, no, yes or no question. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first. And so, so your answer is, is, no. is My answer is qualified, yes. Jack Smith won a procedural point with the Supreme Court today. Donald Trump's lawyers were not actually asking for the Supreme Court to hear the case now. The Trump lawyers were asking to send the, for the Supreme Court to send the case back to the Circuit Court of Appeals for another hearing there before the full 11 judges of the Circuit Court of Appeals. In Jack Smith's brief to the Supreme Court, Jack Smith argued that there was no need for the Supreme Court to hear the case at all. But if the Supreme Court was inclined to hear the case, Jack Smith asked the Supreme Court to not send the case back for another round at the appeals court, but to set an expedited hearing at the Supreme Court, schedule that expedited hearing, and that is what the Supreme Court has now done. Leading off our discussion tonight is Neil Katyal, former acting U.S. Solicitor General and host of the podcast Courtside with Neil Katyal. He is an MSNBC legal analyst. And Neil, I want to begin the way all lawyers begin when they get these notices from the Supreme Court that they're going to hear your case. They have, the Supreme Court identified for the lawyers on both sides the question and the only question they want to hear addressed. And I'm going to give that question to the audience now. The question is whether and if so, to what extent does a former president enjoy presidential immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office? Uh, how would you address that question? Um, well, if I'm Jack Smith, uh, the prosecutor here, I would say absolutely not, or maybe heck no, um, and just point to the proud tradition of our Constitution, which is at its essence, Lawrence, there's one central idea, which is no person is above the law. And what Donald Trump has done throughout his presidency, before and after, is always basically his arguments amount to I'm above the law. So when he was president and there was the Mueller report, which outlined 10 crimes he had committed, he said, you can't indict me because I'm a sitting president. He then gets voted out of office and then he commits crimes on January 6th to try and stay in office. And he says, you can't prosecute me because I'm still a sitting president. So then Congress goes and tries to impeach him. 
for this. And his lawyers go to the Senate and say, oh, no, you can't impeach him. You can only prosecute him after he leaves office. So then Jack Smith does exactly that. They prosecute him after he leaves office. And he says, oh, no, you can't prosecute me because I was impeached before and I wasn't convicted. So now I can't be prosecuted. It's all just a big shell game. It always adds up to the same thing. Donald Trump evades the law. And unfortunately, today, Lawrence, the Supreme Court put its thumb on the side of saying, Donald Trump, we're going to help you evade the law. There's lots of caveats there that we can talk about in a moment. But, you know, that is, I think, the upshot of where we are today. And do you mean uh, evade the law simply by the delay in the trial? Or are you anticipating, based on what you're seeing uh, in this order today, that this court, five justices on this court, could actually find some immunity provisions to apply to this case? I cannot imagine five justices, Lawrence, of the Supreme Court saying that Donald Trump has anything like a, a serious legal claim here. It is so antithetical to everything we as lawyers, we as citizens think about our government. And you're, the clip you just showed before illustrates the consequences. A president can go and assassinate his political rival and say it's an official act and you can't prosecute him. That's I mean, Looney Tunes, to put it mildly. So, no, I don't think that's the worry. The worry is the Supreme Court agreed to hear this case and set a fairly slow schedule of hearing it on April 22nd. I know Trump wanted a longer schedule, but still, that's a long time. And for reasons we can talk about, when you start doing the math, there's a real risk that Donald Trump could evade justice um, and evade this prosecution. It seems, uh, according to the question that the Supreme Court is asking, that this could be a narrower argument in front of the Supreme Court. There might, apparently there will be nothing about double jeopardy. They seem to, because those are the two questions that the Trump lawyers brought to the Supreme Court, the double jeopardy and this uh, immunity for official acts, or as the Trump lawyers put it, acts that, it, that are at the outer perimeter of official duties. It seems that discussion about the perimeter uh, and what is an official act will be the focus of this argument. That's exactly right. Donald Trump's lawyers had made another argument about double jeopardy, which was even more bogus than their absolute immunity one. And that is really saying something. I mean, you got to try to come up with an argument that's weaker than the absolute immunity one, but Donald Trump's lawyers managed to find it, and the Supreme Court didn't bother wanting to hear that piece of it. You're absolutely right. So it does turn on this absolute immunity thing, and the way that the court has written it, they've written it in such a way, um, it says, alleged official acts. And by the alleged official acts, they don't mean what the prosecutor is alleging. They mean what Donald Trump, a former president, is alleging. And I, you know, the idea that someone can just stand up and say, well, because I was a former president, I'm alleging these are official acts, like trying to launch a coup on January 6th. Um, that's an official act. And now you have to evaluate my immunity claim. Um, that can't possibly, Lawrence, be what the law is. So I'm not worried about the Supreme Court ultimately doing the right thing when they hear this case. I'm worried about how long it's going to take for the Supreme Court to do the right thing and whether the American public is going to be deprived in the interim of, uh, of actually Donald Trump ever reaching justice. And there's one other point I'd make about this, which has to do with prosecutorial norms, because there is an informational asymmetry here. During this whole delay period, while Trump, while the Supreme Court hears Trump's case, Trump can go out to the cameras and say the case is bogus and attack Jack Smith and all sorts of stuff. Federal prosecutors don't act that way. They only get to speak through their filings and their presentation of evidence. So now with these months and months of delay, that's great for Trump. He's going to get to claim he's being persecuted without the public ever having the opportunity to actually hear the, the very persuasive evidence against him or a jury to hear those things.